All right, I got another report. This one um, is concerning the polar vortex, and it says the following. The polar vortex is about to split in two. But what does that actually mean? All right, so this is a pretty big deal because I just shared with you a report just a, a, a few broadcasts ago. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my Facebook. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel. On my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, and on my website. But apparently, the polar vortex about to split in two is going to cause terrible, uh, you know, winter. Uh, you know, terrible cold. Uh, you know, cold and, and you know, freezing temperatures to come across the scene. And you may say, yeah, but you know, it's winter, so it makes sense. Yeah, but you know, this is erratic weather. This is this is last days type of weather. This is. Whether that is like the 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 you know the you know the smoke or the um, you know the atmosphere before the apocalyptic type of freezing that we're going to be seeing before we know it, I believe that a global cooling is going to come to this planet. While many people are saying, "No, the you know the the planet's warming, it's it's getting hotter. We got to cool it down." I believe Bill Gates, along with others, are saying that they want to put some kind of shade over the sun. Over the sun. <laughs> This big blazing ball of fire, right? I mean, it's it's, it, it's it's the sun, for crying out loud. God made the sun. But they want to put a shade, like a lampshade, over the sun so that it can help cool the earth down because the earth is just so hot. Okay, yes, there is some heat, without a doubt. The earth is absolutely hot at times. But make no mistake about it, there's going to be a sudden shift and there's going to be a global cooling on such, it's going to be at such levels that people are going to be stunned because it's going to cause crop failure. It's going to cause um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's going to cause a shift in our poles. It's going to, we, you know, what's called pole shifts. Uh, it, it's going to cause a lot of damage. Uh, volcanoes are going to be part of the reason why there's going to be a global cooling because you're going to see an increase in volcanoes. Why? Because Earth, just like I shared with you in a broadcast, like I said a few days ago, Earth is apparently spinning faster and they're saying scientists are saying earth is spinning its fastest in 50 years which is concerning to them and could throw time out of sync particularly utc time which is called universal time i believe i have to double check um let me double check that i want to make sure what utc means yeah coordinated universal time or universal time coordinated so we're talking about the time of the planet. The Earth is spinning faster. And listen, folks, the first, the, the very first portion of scripture, I think, when I hear that the Earth is spinning faster, again, just like I shared with you all on a broadcast just a few days ago, is the scripture that Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, when he talks about the signs of the times. He said, you will know my coming. You will know that... You will know my coming based on the signs that I'm going to you know, lay out for you. Because the apostles asked him, at the time, they were disciples. They were not apostles yet. But the disciples asked them, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and that of the end of the age? And Jesus isn't just giving one sign. He gives them a plethora of signs. He gives them sign after sign, detailed events that would take place across the face of the planet. And not just on our earth, not just on the planet, but in the in the sky, <laughs> in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And then upon the earth, the distress of nations with perplexity. The seas will be roaring. Men's hearts will fail them from fear for the things that will be coming upon the earth because the powers of the heavens will be shaken. So the portion of scripture that I thought when it says earth is spinning as fast as was when Jesus said, and unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. That's the time of the great tribulation. When we're getting reports, scientific confirmed reports, just as we have been for the past few days, that the earth is spinning as fast as in 50 years, that tells me that the earth is readying itself for what's called the Great Tribulation, according to Matthew chapter 24. And unless those days were shortened, Jesus said, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Earth is spinning 
quick. That's, that's a shortening of the days. You might say, oh, that's good because I don't have to feel like I'm at work for 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours a day. Phew. Yes, okay, there's benefit to that, but biblically speaking, this is bad. <laughs> this is really, this is prophetic news. I don't ever give you bad news, but this is, when I say the word bad, this is like, this is not good. I, I say the word bad now in conjunction or in, in, in reference to the great tribulation, folks. The earth is preparing for it. The rise of the beast of the Antichrist is near. And now look, again, the polar vortex is about to split in two. I believe one of the main reasons is because the earth is spinning so fast. It's, it, it's spinning faster that they're saying that coordinated universal time could go out of sync. All right, so let me uh, sh you know, share with you. Um, let's go into what it means with regards to this polar vortex being or about split in two. What does it actually mean? Okay, so a blob of warm air high in the atmosphere has pushed the polar vortex off its axis over the past week. In the coming days, it's likely to split into pieces with possible ripple effects on weather across the northern hemisphere. Uh, something similar to when, uh, you know, you have waves in the ocean or that ripple effect in, you know, it, you know in large bodies of water. It says, but don't start stocking soup for a blizzard yet. They try to make this all cute. It's, this is so alarming, but they try to make it cute. Don't try to stock up for soup just yet. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is biblical. Don't start stocking soup for a blizzard yet, although a distorted vortex has been linked to blizzards and cold snaps. In other words, major freezing, okay? Uh, it says here, atmospheric scientists say that it's too soon to know which part of the world might bear the brunt. This is like a major asteroid that's about to hit the planet. They're not sure where it's going to hit, but they're going to try to make a good guesstimate. Anyway, the polar vortex, they say, is a cap of rotating air that's usually centered on the North Pole. Uh, there's another vortex in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, it sits in the stratosphere, a high altitude band of the atmosphere far, above, you know, far above the wind, the clouds, and precipitation we feel on the ground. And as the pole goes dark and freezes in the fall, wind begins to swirl and rise from east to west, or from west to east, excuse me, to balance the temperature gap between low altitudes and the poles. Well, the vortex formed by that wind, which turns counterclockwise around the pole, ends up much colder than the surrounding air. But high altitude heat waves called sudden stratospheric warming events can disrupt the vortex. And they're saying that this is exactly what is happening right now. A wobble of the jet stream which is a fast moving wave of air that circles a pole in the atmosphere below the polar, excuse me, below the polar vortex has led to extreme warming in the stratosphere, disrupting the polar vortex. And according to IBM meteorologist Michael Ventress, he says, and I quote, essentially that vortex is getting shoved off the pole and into the mid Atlantic. So it's not especially unusual, apparently, for the vortex to break down, although this one is particularly powerful. They're saying stratospheric warming events happen about every other year, but this one has really captivated their attention. And then they say, uh, you know, when you think about these direct waves of energy upwards towards the atmosphere, think about ocean waves on a beach. Uh, when they crash on the shore, the energy from these waves is, is, uh, is dissipated through friction with the beach surface. In the atmosphere, waves can also break, but in, in this case, the energy from those waves slows the polar vortex and heats the stratosphere, and this disruption causes the vortex to slow down and spread outwards. And so because of this, they're saying that the vortex appears to be on a path of, spl uh, appears to be on a path of splitting, where we have essentially two areas of a vortex. Again, it sounds like an asteroid that they're not sure where it's going to hit. And this is probably a sign or I should say symbolic of an asteroid that's probably going to hit their, our planet soon. It's probably going to break into two pieces and it's going to hit several areas of the planet. They're saying it's hard to predict, though, when the exact on the ground consequences might be. This field of research is still in its infancy. We're just understanding now that these splits are important for prediction of weather patterns going out weeks. So, uh, you know, again, they are anticipating very cold weather, Arctic type of cold weather. Uh, and I say that this is a major sign of the times of erratic weather that was prophesied in the scriptures. This in conjunction with the earth spinning to me is mind boggling. I say it's not mind boggling. Please forgive me. That's not the term I meant to use. It is stunning. It is stunning that we get to see all that I'm sharing with you. I find it stunning. You know, I've been, I've been, I've been privileged 
to do these broadcasts and share with you headlines from around the world matching biblical prophecy and I've not grown tired of it. It does not bore me not one bit. I am ex I'm stunned. I say I'm excited about it, but not like, well, giddy. I'm not like it's not like giddy excited, but it's like I'm stunned. I'm looking at biblical prophecy. This is scripture happening in real time and we're that last generation that Jesus said that this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. We're here. We're here. All right, so let me share with you some particular portions of scripture uh, concerning this polar vortex and the cold, right? The freezing that's going to come. The very first thing I think of is the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24. This polar vortex that will be happening, they're saying it's about to split in two, and this could cause some major freezing to come upon several areas of the planet, I believe is symbolic with regards to the sign of the times. Jesus' own word says the following, the many false prophets will rise up and deceive many, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Folks, I don't know about you, but we're looking at a lot of this happening in the times that we're living in. A lot of people's love has grown cold. They're not, you know, Sally and, and, and you know, Jim are not the same people that they were a couple of years ago. Sally and Jim were happy-go-lucky, you know, one lived in the East, the other one lived in the West Coast, and man, you could always say hi to them, and great neighbors, and all of a sudden, you know, times, I say times are changing, yeah, but it's the shifting in the, in the spirit realm, and because uh, they, they, you know, they did not have a good and obedient heart, because they allowed the cares and the worries and the riches of this life to come in and, and you know, steal the word of God from them, you know, choke it out. Because, uh, you know, the enemy who walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, they didn't know how to resist them steadfast in the faith because their faith was not strong enough because they spent time in things of this world rather than in the scriptures, rather than, in the, you know, in the spirit of God. They didn't walk in the spirit the way that they were supposed to, the way that they needed to in the urgent times that we're living in. And now what? The love of many have grown cold. Now, of course, I use those names as, an, you know, as examples, but I mean, make no mistake about it, it's happening. You can fill in the blank with all sorts of names. People's love has grown, has grown cold. And the word love here in the Greek, in the portion of scripture that I'm sharing with you, is agape. It's the same love that is known as the love of God, that God himself gives. The love of many, the agape love of many will grow cold. Because there was no nurturing of it. Lawlessness abounded in their life, rather than the love of God, rather than the security, the protection, the the you know the needfulness to stay at the feet of Jesus the needfulness to stay in the presence of God he who dwells in the secret place of the most high must uh you know he who dwells in the secret place of the most high and abides under the shadow of the almighty that is the time that's exactly where we need to be that's our dwelling place and because they didn't do this the love of many are growing cold they're letting little things offend them they're letting nothing that's it's going it can't, it's not even worthy to be weighed on the scales to even be found wanting. It's literally nothing. We have nothing offending people. Oh, the slightest thing. I'm walking on eggshells around you because the people are just offended because they did not cultivate the love of God in their life. Fascinating times, folks. All right, so another portion of scripture I'd like to share with you with, uh, with regards to the headline, the polar vortex headline, is found... Um, in Zechariah chapter 14, and it's in, you know, in the context of the scripture, it talks about the Lord's coming, okay? But I want to read to you um, just a portion of it, starting in verse, um, starting in verse 5. Uh, Thus the Lord my God will come, and all the saints with you. It shall come to pass in that day that there will be no light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night. But at evening time, it shall happen that it will be light. So here is another portion of scripture uh, that, you know, it talks about. And as a matter of fact, I want to share with you um, from the same scripture here. Uh, verse 8. I think I might have skipped verse 8. Let me read verse 8. On that day, living water will flow out, of, out from Jerusalem, half of it, east to the Dead Sea and half of it west to the Mediterranean Sea in summer and in winter. So here, in, again, in this portion of scripture is letting us know that God is going to come and things are going to be diminishing on the day of the Lord. Things that we have always depended on, such as light, such as heat, uh, is going to diminish. And it says, again, neither day nor night. 
it, it won't it won't even, it won't be there anymore polar vortex is shifting the earth spinning faster the Bible's telling us that the day of the Lord is at hand and it's gonna be a terrible day folks that's what I'm telling you I'm telling you I'm telling you I'm telling you you need to get saved you need to be born again you really do you need to submit and surrender your entire life to Jesus Job chapter 37 verse 8 through 10 the beast go into dens and remain in their layers from the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God, ice is given and the broad waters are frozen. So here, this polar vortex, this global cooling that we're going to be seeing um, you know, much more in the coming days, weeks, months, uh, is, um, is, 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 by, is by the breath of God. It's, 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 it's by him. It's not going past him. He's not like, oh my gosh, I think we were talking about global warming. Now it's cold, you know. He, he, he's doing it. Why are the beasts going into the dens and remaining in their layers? Why? Why? Because something is about to happen that God himself is sending, that he is doing, that he is in. We got we to gotta fear the Lord. Zechariah chapter 1. Uh, not Zechariah. Zephaniah chapter 1 says, stand still. Let's uh, say, please, I want to make sure I'm saying this right. Zephaniah chapter 1. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 7 says, Be silent in the presence of the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The beasts are going into their dens because God's breath is about to make the ice happen in ways that we have not seen. The broad waters are about to be frozen. We're talking about the broad waters. We're talking about oceans. We're talking about some kind of global cataclysmic thing that's going to happen that's going to cause a major cooling. As we're talking about the polar vortex about to split in two as just a precursor of what lays ahead. Where's your salvation? Where's your faith? Are, are you hidden in Christ? Are you in the cleft of the rock? We have to be. There's no, there's no other way. God is going Listen, there's a day that God says he will punish the inhabitants of the earth. There's a day that God says he will punish the wicked for their wickedness on this planet. There's a day that God says he will trample the nations in anger. I know nobody wants to talk about this. They're like, oh no, God's a loving God. Yes, God will never do that. What are you talking about? Are you serious? Would you just let your kids go around slapping you around in your face, demanding money from you? Because that's what you think you could do to God. You wouldn't allow it as a parent, but you think God would be okay with it. Just You just go around and slap him around and say, give me my money, punk. And you just talk to him any old way because, uh, you know, you know, my big brother Jesus handled it for me. So I, I could treat you any old way I want to, Dad. No! Are you... Oh, he, God, it says here, God is going to come and things are going to get real serious. Things are going to get bad. But it's okay because as long as you're in right standing with him, as long as you have received the finished work of Jesus Christ... As long as you have received salvation through Jesus, the finished work of Jesus, as long as you have received the gift of eternal life, as long as your sins have been forgiven through Jesus, you're going to be covered on that day. You're going to be hiding in that day. And even if you died, you die in right standing with God. Look, the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Each and every one of us will have to go before the judgment seat of Christ. And did your body tremble before his presence at all while you were on this planet? Yeah, it'll tremble on the day. It'll tremble when you're in the, in, you know, in the courtroom of God. But did your body tremble in the presence of God while you were on this planet? While you were in your home, while you were in your workplace? Did your lips quiver at the sound of his voice? Did you tremble within yourself? Did you maybe even lose some sleep? Lord... Why are you troubling me? Good. Maybe there's some house cleaning he has to do in your spirit. Maybe he has to strengthen the things that are lame in your life. Strengthen the feeble knees is what it says here. Let me read you this portion of scripture as I end this broadcast. I got to end the broadcast. The portion of scripture I want to end the broadcast with is found in James chapter 4 verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Why is there constant fighting, constant fighting and bickering? Constant fighting and bickering for nothing. There's nothing that came out of it. Nothing. Except damage. Oh, yeah, we, we, we made our point. No, you didn't. People died. There was bloodshed. 
There were innocent people that died. There were just people that got a little maybe too carried away that died. And, and, and now what happened? You got nothing out of it. You got a mess now. You got to clean up now. You got to answer for, 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 you know, for your nonsense. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desire, your desires for pleasure that war in your members? In other words, the fight starts from within your sin nature. It fights from within your spirit that has not yet been born again. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You think you constantly wanting something. I want to be rich. I want to be rich. I, I want that house. I want that house. And you constantly, you know, muttering to yourself this nonsense outside of being in Christ. You covet, but you still cannot obtain it. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And then it says here, because some I'm already, look, people are, I, I do ask. No, okay, but listen, okay, listen. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. And so many people be like, oh, see that they, I knew it. See God, this is a setup, God. I can't even ask you because if I ask you, you won't even give me what I want because there's a certain way to ask. You better believe it. Like I said, how many parents are tuning in? Would you, as, who would, what kid would go around slapping their mom or dad? Give me some money. I'm asking you. Give it to me now. I'm asking you for some money. Bam. No. You're asking a mess, kid. And you, I mean, you got to, look, if you got a right parent, they're not, you're not going to go that far. You may die. But I'm making a point. Many people think they could do that to God. They're hurting God. They're grieving God. They're disrespecting God. Like the biggest slap in the face, which is very not good. Okay. The Bible says in the book of Exodus that honor your mother and your father for with this commandment is the very first commandment with promise. And the promise is the gift of long life. That was for the earthly mom and dad. God told the children, honor your mother and father so that it may be well with you. Not so they could go away acting, you know, because a lot of moms and dads, need, they need to get saved themselves. They need to be, dis, you know, they need to be disciplined by God. But when you honor them, that makes a way for that to happen. And because listen, we need it. Mom and dad still need it. Just because we're big enough age doesn't mean we don't need it. We're done. No, we need still to get right with God. And we need to stay right. And that includes chastisement. That includes being disciplined by the Lord. But there's a promise. So if there is a commandment to honor your mother and your father that comes with the promise, it's a you know, first commandment with promise, and that promise is a gift of long life. And you know, again, that's your earthly parents that you are to give respect to. How much more to the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning? I don't know if it could be measured because that's how big it is. You fight in war, yet you do not ask, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Let me make something clear to you. Let me tell you something real quick as I end this broadcast. The, the world is not a good friend. The world will pose itself as the best friend you ever need. Listen, you don't need God. You don't need your, you know, you don't need your family. You don't even need yourself. I'll be your friend and I'll be you. And then while you're walking around worldly and you're walking around like you're a friend of the world, you're, you're going to get chewed up and spit out. You're going to get beat up from the floor, from the top to the floor. I mean, you're going to be just used as their wash rag. You're going to be used as a, as a world's doormat. And then when they're, when they're done with you, they're going to toss you aside like the trash that they believe you to be. God says, do not be a friend of this world because they pose it, they, it comes, the world comes posing itself as to being the pristine. This is, you know, you need me. I'm your, I'm your all in all. I'm going to take care of you. And it's going to stab you right in the back. And, and, and God says, listen, as you're doing this, you are an adulterer. You become, you, 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 you're, 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 you're an adulterer or, and an adulteress. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Because God knows the world. God knows, God knows who runs the world. And it's the prince of the power of the air, that spirit that works in the sons of disobedience. The lowercase g, God of this world, who is Satan. To be a friend of the world is to be a friend of Satan. What kind of friend is that? You, know? but you might as well throw yourself in a lion's den, literally. And you're not Daniel, okay? That was one time, folks. Not saying it can't happen again, but I'm just making a point. Okay? If you think you could be a friend of the world, you could throw yourself in a lion's den or in a snake pit. Seriously. It's not going to last. Okay? You're going to be... It's food. 
Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So again, as I end this broadcast, let it be that you're found worthy of the call that God has for you in the times that we're living in. Let it be that you're not found to be uh, in, on, on the wrong side of history, folks. Don't be a friend of the world. Let it be that you're a friend of God. And the only way that you can be a friend of God is if you have faith. Faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And there is a portion of scripture, there's a whole chapter dedicated to people of faith, men and women of faith, young and old of faith, that God said, these, <laughs> these, are, more, these are my warriors. This is me in the flesh, if you will. Hebrews chapter 11, or is it chapter 12? I got to double check. I got to end the broadcast. Hebrews chapter 11. Read it in context, but also read Hebrews chapter 12. It talks about the race of faith. You don't want to miss it. Tune into your scriptures. Seriously, it's always available 24-7. Folks, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it's a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching biblical prophecy. Uh, visit my website. We uh, currently have the 2021 uh, first fruit offering happening now. You don't want to miss it. You want to be partakers. You want to participate and you want to join. It's very easy. Holy time. We're dedicating the very first of this new year to the Lord. Okay. Uh, so please visit my website. Learn more. It's very simple. It's nothing hard. You know, it's, it's no hoops to jump through. Uh, it, it's, it's very special. And we've actually done it already. I think this is our sixth year. I have to double check. Um, so anyway, you, you don't want to miss it. Any and every person who's ever been part of it has always been blessed for the entire year. It doesn't matter what's going on. It does not matter what's going on. God has always been faithful to them. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. That's just the way it is with this ministry. So again, be part of uh, this uh, very special time. www.openyoureyespeople.com www.openyoureyespeople.com Our mailing address, if you'd like to mail me, if you'd like to help support the work of this end time ministry with a donation, that would be really, really blessed. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 218, Shirts, Texas 78154. Or you can also donate on our website, again, online securely at www.openyoureyespeople.com. Until the next broadcast, may you all be richly blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.